Welcome to another collaboration video of the Makers with Heart. We are Crafting with Amanda, Katie Weeks, Don Haight, Lori Kutch, Jessica Dipsinski, Kim Ferguson, and Craft with Julie. Welcome to another Little Paper Crafters, Kim Ferguson. I am here representing the Makers with Heart. This is our second month of coming together in a collaboration to share wonderful products from close to my heart with you. This month we are featuring the new Thin Cuts, which are part of our Celebration Slimline products that are going on right now. And we are each featuring one of the seven that are available in our catalogs. I will be showing you this circle cluster. I have taken this cluster and come up with many different ways that you can use it. Tonight I'm going to be showing you how to create a Halloween card. Now this card is not a slim line. A slim line would be a longer, skinnier card that this thin cut would span. With this card here, this is just an example of a prior video I did where I showed many different ways that the circles can be cut apart and come up with different designs. I would love for you to go back and watch that. I will put a link in the end of the video that will take you to that video as well as a link to the playlist for all of the other Makers with Hearts. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, let's see, after me, you would be seeing Amanda tomorrow. So prior to coming to me would have been Julie, but again, those playlists will be down below. So let's talk about the circle cluster. So you can see that the circle cluster is longer than it is on my card. So I'm going to share with you how to cut a smaller version of this that will fit on a A2 card. So I'm going to bring my cuddle bug in here. I still use this faithful cuddle bug that I've had for years and years and years and my plates show it. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your cardstock and place it on your cutting plate and then I just lay this down and I kind of try to center it and I want it to go up to the top because as you can see from my card I did a little bit of an embellishment at the bottom. So I'm going to line that up and then you take your top plate and you just put it on the part that you want to cut. It's only going to press on that thin cut wherever the two plates meet. So you can see how I've got it going right across the bottom of those circles. So that's where it will end and it won't cut any further than that. So I'm going to go ahead and put it through. And if you hear any crackling or, you know, crazy little sounds. It's okay. That's normal. It just means that it's cutting. And here you have it. It didn't cut below where I had that plate. I'm just going to pull this off here and you can see how it stopped right there where I had that plate. I would prefer that it went straight across, but it still kind of gets that bottom part. But through the magic of paper crafting, we can cover it up. I probably should have moved this up a little bit more. So I'm hoping with this card, I will remember to do that. Okay, so that gets my purple version. And then I just went through and I simply cut right here at that circle to cut that loose. There we go. We don't need the purple. We need a green. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put a green piece of cardstock on my cutting plate now and do the same thing. My green doesn't matter as much because I'm not using the green for my card base, but I might someday. So I'm going to go ahead and try to center it as best I can. And then again, trying to get that to be pretty straight so that when I use my cutting plate on top, I can get a straight cut across there. So I'm trying to avoid getting too much of that unwanted portion. So this is basically called partial cutting, partial die cutting. Okay, so this is going to give us our green portion. Again, I don't need all of these little scraps, but again, I did show in that prior video how to use 
some of the scraps that cut off of these things. Had a lot of fun with this thin cut. So there's our green. All right. The next thing that we need to die cut before I take this away. So there's that. If you look at the card, you're going to see that I have a ghost from the Boo Crew pattern paper. And then I also have uh, three other circles that I've put for the backing of the shakers, as well as just an embellishment for a sentiment. So I used our circle thin cuts for that. And if you look, this one is just a little bit bigger than that circle, but it works well enough. This one goes here and this one works for that. And I've done a really handy little chart here that if you want, I just kind of pause the video for a second. I have gone through and I've measured. And the way that I measured is I've kind of, I've tried to go about halfway on each of these cuts so that whatever you put behind will glue to the back of that. So that's where you can see this one is a little bit too big, but um, you could use your Cricut and in the art philosophy image set, there is a circle that you could adjust. So with a Cricut, I know you can get really precise with your measurements. So you could probably cut that out even better. So we need to cut out our plastic for the shaker. So I've just got a page protector here that I've been using. So for that, I need to cut it with this circle. I need to cut it with the smaller circle. And this is double thickness, so it will cut out two of each in the event that I make a mistake. I played on there again. And this, like I said, is cutting out what would be like your acetate. So any packaging material you might have, and that, norm, that is a normal sound of crackling. Just means it's cutting through that plastic. Sometimes I have to pop it off there kind of hard. Okay, here's my little circles. I'm going to place those on top of my pre-cut circles over here so I don't lose them. They're see-through so they get lost very easily. Okay, and then now I need to cut out my ghost. Actually, here's I had this one on top. So this is... I've splattered green close to my heart ink on there just to give it a little bit of a texture and, you know, something fun to look at. So I need one from this circle, one from this circle, and again, we need this larger circle. This one is too small. And hopefully, I've got enough room on here. There we go. Perfect. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut out all three of those at one time. I've got that green cardstock in there. Hopefully that's not going to be. Let's go ahead and pull that out there just in case. There we go. Everything's kind of clinging to each other. It's like static electricity in here. I kind of have a muggy evening going on. Okay, so these are the circle for here, the circle for here, and then this is one that I will stamp that little sentiment on, and now we need to cut out our ghost. And so I've just got a sliver of my printed pattern paper here, and I'm just going to line this up to where I want them. And I think that this time I'll get more of the spider head in there. Didn't see it so much on this one. So let's do that. I like that. Let's kind of move it over to where I'm not getting that bat wing. And then this one sort of gets hidden behind that circle. So that will be fine. There we go. And this is our last piece to cut with the cuddle bug, so I'll get that out of the way. We have all of our pieces cut. And you can see that's one that will go right there. Let me make some room here and we'll start building this card.
I have a table behind me that works out really well when I have it cleaned off to put all of my <laughs> extra supplies. Okay, so just all these little scrap pieces. And then we're done with the thin cuts. So I'm going to put all of them back on their magnetic sheet. And pull this out of the way. Okay, and again, those circle sizes, if you didn't get that the first time. Okay, and we don't need the purple cutouts. You can see where I still have them from doing my sample card. Okay, go out of the way, and then I'll move my mat over for you to see. I've got some more of my supplies on here that I'll be using. Okay, so you can see this is one I've already started putting together. I didn't want you to have to sit through the entire process. But our, our result that we want in the end is this. So you can see the two shakers. And I did some sequins and some glitter trim. So let's go ahead and I want to put the glitter trim on here. Because I want to try to get it behind that um, shaker. So the way you work on these is this just peels right off. And I'm going to line it up on my mat here to try to get it a little bit straighter than I did on my example. And I want to just kind of scoot this up here this time to kind of hide where that those extra cuts are okay there we go and then this is from the spider printed paper but I think it makes a cool design this is just some scraps I had and so you don't really know that it's the spiders by looking at that it looks just kind of like a black and white design I don't think I got that very straight, did I? Let's look. Just ever so slightly off. Looks a little bit better. Okay. And then I'm just going to put some liquid glue down for that spider paper. I don't know if you can hear the neighbors. They seem to be having a get together. So hopefully you're not hearing that. They never do that. So it's, it's kind of funny. Okay. So that's how I just did those layers for that. And then you can see that I used my edge distressor and I went around and edge distress. This is retired, but it is really a fun tool. Okay. So there's that. So let me show you how I build the shaker. Now, I, I realize that all of us know how to do shakers, or pretty much all of us, but let me just help you with some tips on this one. So I've gone ahead and I've used our thinnest foam adhesive tape, and I cut it in half, and I have the strips ready. And then, thanks to Amanda on our Makers with Heart group, she suggested to take the paper off and it makes a huge difference in how well you can manipulate this around the circle. So all the paper's off. I just lay it down in the middle of that thin cut cardstock and just mold it around there. You want to do your best to not have it show off of the edge. So let me go ahead and go to my zoomed in for this. There you go. So zoom in a little bit there and you can see how I'm peeling off that paper and I'm just molding it around that circle. And you know what? <laughs> I did this earlier too. The, the plastic has to go down first, you guys. <laughs> I told myself, don't do it in the video. So you have to do this first to go around and glue this. And the other thing that I remember now too 
is I did go in and I cut out these pieces so that you could really see the shaker in there. So I'm glad I caught that too to show you that. I'll just trim that one out and then I'm going to go over here and I'm going to trim this out as well. There we go. Okay, and then I'm going to be making this one a shaker down here. So I'm going to, did I leave that? I did cut that out. I think it just looks better. It really opens it up. Because you want to see that you did the shaker. You want to see the shaker part moving around in there. Okay, here we go. So now get our plastic. Where did the big plastic go? <laughs> oh goodness okay so that's going to stick down there on that liquid adhesive and then I'm going to put the adhesive on the smaller circle okay there now we're where we need to be now you go back and put this on the acetate. And I'm only going to do one to give you an idea of how to do this. So you're not watching the whole thing. And I'm doing the larger one so you have a better view than doing just the small one. And you want to try to butt up each piece because you're trying to block any way for your shaker elements to shake out. Okay, this next piece I'm going to put down, but I'll have to trim it. And I have some non-thick, non-stick scissors to help cut that right there. Okay, there. So now I have, it's not the prettiest thing, but it's going to be covered up. So you can see how I have that foam all around there. And then I use my, it's like a baby powder, non-static powder, so that my embellishment pieces will not stick to the sides. I just use my spatula. I'm going to scoop my shaker bits in there, kind of flatten them out a little bit. That's probably a little bit too much. I've already kind of weeded out the smaller pieces that I want. That's why there's a pile over there. Kind of shake it out to where they're pretty level. And then you're going to put your backing on there. And that's what these green pieces are for, or white with the green splatters and that just seals right on there and that creates that shaker okay all right so I'm not gonna make you suffer through that again <laughs> so my next step that I did was I wanted to add the ghost and I wanted to do the sentiment so for my sentiment which is just boo it is from our Halloween besties Lucy I used this boo banner and our black ink and I do like to use the little foam that comes with the stamp set to allow for, you know, trying to not end up with an uneven stamped image. It just kind of helps to give some absorbs absorption there. And I've already seasoned this. I rubbed it on my arm. I've already done that because I've already stamped it once. And then I'm just going to go from side to side, stamp it down, hold it there for a little bit, let that ink transfer onto the paper. Be careful not to squish too hard so that you lose the nice sharp edges of your stamp. So there's that boo banner. Okay, and then we have our 
ghost. And so the ghost will go behind this piece here. And the boo goes behind that piece there. So since we have the foam for the shakers, we need to add a little bit of foam to the back for just getting these pieces on there too so that it isn't too misshapen. That's the word I should be using. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit more of my foam to go between my cut, my thin cut here, and the pieces I'm going to add now with the sentiment and the patterned paper. And I'm not putting a lot, just enough to lift it up a bit. All right. Now, the other thing that happened is you can see how my ghost image went over that too much. This time I want to make sure that when I'm putting this down, I want it down first because um, I kind of want it to show through here, but you can make your choice. I just wanted more of the spider web to show where this would cut it off up there. So personal preference. So I need to look at where my ghost is and I'm going to lay this over it. And like I said, I'm going to shift it up a little bit more to where it's going to go more behind the purple and not so much into my next, into my next circle. So I like that a lot better. Hope that makes sense. Okay. So there's our ghost in with the spider web. And now we're going to do the same thing with our boo. And I do want my boo banner to be a little bit slanted. So again, we're going to line up these circles. There we go. Okay. So there we have all the backing on there. And then the black is simply when we put it down on our card base. And then that will be the end of some assembling this. I do see a little bit of my white foam adhesive sticking through. So I'm going to trim that off a little bit. And now what I need to do is put glue on the back of these. This is where it helps to have that foam adhesive behind those other two pieces because it makes it the same level to put your glue. And my glue is going to go on the purple. all of the purple that is showing and then on the back of these you don't want to put it on that green thin cut because that is to be elevated up a bit and by gluing it down at this stage it might not set well it might kind of be up and down a little bit where you want it to be poked up through Okay, and then I'm going to go through, I'm going to press that purple layer down. We want the green to be up. Okay, so there is our card built. So you can see I've got a little bit of that foam adhesive. I'll probably trim that a little bit more off camera. Okay, and then my last steps that I did is I took the gold think of Stella or shimmer brush and I just got it flowing Come on. there we go and then I'm I just tap it Kind of fill up some of the background. I kind of do a diagonal with it. I think that's good. 
And then I'm going to use some of my larger sequins. And with that, I'm just going to do a single one up here. And then I'm probably going to do about three down here like I did on the other one. And you want to do things in a triangle. And our eyes like to see odd numbers. So a cluster of three and then a single one by itself is a little bit more pleasing to our eye. And that will do it for this card using the Circle Cluster Thin Cut in the Makers with Heart collaboration. And I hope that you have played along and watched everybody and using the products and giving them a try yourself. And uh, tomorrow, look forward to Amanda coming on and showing you what she will be doing with another thin cut that's available in our catalogs. Thank you so much for being here and uh, have a great crafty day. Take care. Bye-bye.